Hello and welcome to Mission Nonprofit. I'm your host, Robert Cam. On Mission Nonprofit, we feature a local nonprofit organization from the local community, and this month we have Olympia Art Space Alliance. With me to talk about Olympia Art Space Alliance is Ron Hinton and Tom Anderson. And you guys are on the board? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so this has been uh, around for three years or so. Was it 2011? Mm -hmm. Right, exactly when we started the board, which okay. is a uh, nonprofit. All right, and so how did uh, it come about? How did the organization start? Well, uh, I might jump in here on the, uh, after the feasibility study in 2009, which the city uh, took f with, uh, they contracted with Art Space Projects USA. And uh, so after that, it kind of uh, went on hold a little bit waiting for something to happen, there was a committee formed. And from that committee then is when we decided if, if we needed to go to the next stage, which was the, uh, the art market study, that we needed to kind of incorporate, become a nonprofit, start raising some funds to pay for the survey. So Let's, that was 2011. I want to back up though and, and kind of give an overall uh, you know, understanding of what, mm -hmm. what you guys do. Um, so there is a national, it's called Art Space Project, mm -hmm. and they put together buildings where people can do art and live in the same spaces. Correct. Right. And so um, there was an interest in putting one of those here in Olympia, and we had a feasibility study uh, brought on by a council member, a former council member, mm -hmm. and then uh, you guys were like just trying to keep it going. Is Correct. that right? Okay. Right, right. And, and get it to really happen. Right. Okay. Because the, the, um, the national uh, art space is, has about 30 of these projects completed in the United States, and they only come where they're invited. They don't you know, push their way into a community and, and try to put an agenda down. So they were invited. Um, they were excited about the uh, response from the community, and so it was a matter of taking that ball and, and trying to keep some momentum with it. So we had the feasibility study, and, and mm -hmm. it turned out uh, positive. Am I right? Correct. Can, can yeah. you tell us some more details about uh, what uh, you know? What did it show? What did it teach us? We had uh, about six hundred and six hundred and three responses, and about ninety-five uh, businesses that were interested in it, which was considered a, an extraordinarily good turnout for the for the survey. For the survey, and you were. On a feasibility study back in 09, was that was the original question? That was different. Okay. That's different from yes. the survey? Yes. Yeah, right. totally, okay. yeah, they're two different. The feasibility was 09. Okay. And then the market study we just completed. Okay, so you guys did the market study. Right. But um, Art Space Projects USA did the feasibility study, or? They did it? both. Uh, yeah, okay, a little they helped you with here. both. Okay. Yeah, the uh, feasibility study, which uh, was 09, and that was kind of, they came to town, they did all these kind of, uh, is like workshops with artists, art organizations, and just kind of, you know, evaluated what the needs were. And the, the one thing that was really nice about the 09 feasibility was they, the turnout, they did a turnout at the Washington Center, kind mm -hmm. of a night, you know, to, to meet art, art space. And there was like over 300 people showed up for that one night, and which was the most that they've ever had in any community. And they go into big communities like Seattle has, you know, starting their third project and stuff. And uh, so anyway, they were just really excited to get back to Olympia for the uh, for the market survey. Okay. And then and then we just then did the market survey. Okay. This, we just released. And both of them turned out positive. Yes. That, that yeah. Olympia right. needs. Yeah. Um, and that's when I let Tom take off with the survey because that was the 603 respondents uh -huh. uh, from the artists. So right. That and that was basically done. Um, oh, we, we tried to reach out to people through Facebook, postcards, direct mailings, um, information, fundraising events, anything to get the word out so that people could go online and fill out the questionnaire. And it took about 10 or 15 minutes to do the questionnaire, but it was very um, comprehensive about income, uh, interest in where you want it to be, uh, whether it was the east side, the west side, downtown, um, the type of work that you did, whether you would want just studio space and or studio live workspace. And so it gave us a real, um, real in-depth profile of the community. Um, not just age groups, uh, economic factors, uh, ethnic profiles. It was just a, 
a really remarkable um, turn of events just to get this information for us to work with and go forward. And the national organization was very impressed with um, the amount of uh, responses that we've got. What do these art space um, buildings look like in other communities? What kind of uh, spaces are they? And mm -hmm. you know, what's included in them? Uh, what's the housing like? And have you done some research mm -hmm. on yeah, them? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, the, the wonderful thing about this is they really, um, like with the art space projects, they really design these with the community. I mean, it's, it's, it, you know, it's not that you, they're putting a stamp and going, this is, this is the project that you're going to get. It, it's, it's totally uh, dependent on what the needs are, which is why the surveys, because you know, the surveys was both from the artist and then we did another complete survey from art organizations, like what are, what are their needs? And there's, there was like, uh, I think it was 50, almost 60 respondents that said they, want, they needed rental space, they needed, and that's all traditionally in an art space project, then that would be the first floor. So like Everett, there's a, it's a four story art space project Three of those stories are art live workspace. That's where the studios, or you know, that's where the studios are. That's where artists uh, live and work. And then downstairs, there's the Shack Art Center, and that's the city runs an art center. It's well, it's through the Shack uh, community, kind of the art center. And uh, so it's usually uh, like either businesses or uh, you know rental spaces on the first floor, and then you live, then the artists live above that. So it takes in both retail, it takes in commercial, all kinds of aspects, depending on what the needs are in the community. Sometimes um, buildings are uh, renovated that exist that, that fit the, the needs of, um, of the city or else they're built new. So from the ground up and then they're typically you know, green built. Do we have an idea at this point what an Olympia art space would look like, where it would be, and what would be included in it? Do we kind of have an idea from the survey? It would probably incorporate about 50 units. Um, that could be anything from a studio to uh, several three-bedroom units. Um, they're all-inclusive in terms of families and age groups. It would probably be uh, the downstairs would be uh, commercial, primarily nonprofit, and we've been talking to all kinds of different interests, including um, all three colleges locally, who may be interested in having some kind of a, a center in the downtown core. And then, um, but th as far as actual location, no, we haven't decided on that yet. But I think that the last survey showed that most people want it downtown. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. So, and, then, and then second place was west side and, right. then, and then east side. Right. Right. So, um, but downtown centrally located. I, I also heard some rumors that people kind of wanted it at the old brew house. Is that, is that anything to that or is that just something? Maybe that, some would want that. Yeah. I'm not sure that it would be feasible mm -hmm. economically or okay. architecturally to do that. Yeah. Um, one of the, um, the real pluses, um, particularly in getting funds from, from the federal government, is being close to um, transit. Uh -huh. So the closer we can be to to the to downtown local transit downtown transit, yeah. right, um, would be a big plus in being able to get funding from housing and urban development specifically. Did you do any research on what kind of artists would be located, like like what their art form would be? Sure, and it, and that was you know the response six hundred and three respondents. We we had you know all the the typical studio you know, artists, that, that, but we had musicians, we have dance, we have, you know, it's all the art space projects, the live is for creative. It's like if you're in a creative industry. So there can be a graphic artist, there's, you know, there's wardrobe from theater, you know, there's, I mean, it's just an arras, uh, or a array of uh, poetry, mm -hmm. writing, uh, you name it. They're, just they live there. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a creative workspace. There, so. there wasn't kind of anything that that stood on top, like any. Well, usually your studio artists, mostly like for painters. Ours, yeah, mostly okay, visual painters. artists. Yeah, yeah. mostly yeah. visual. Yeah, and okay. that's generally, I think, I'm sure around the country, that's that's generally what it is. But, you know, any anybody can apply and anybody can can live there as in the creative industries. Why don't we take a look at uh, a video from uh, Art Space Projects USA okay. and see um, 
what some of these art spaces look like around the, around the country. So Excellent. we'll be right back. building that has been built and created by the company called Artspace and I am here today to uh, share with you um, why Artspace matters and wh what it has done for me and why I'm so appreciative. Living here has changed my life significantly. Uh, I don't think that I would be doing the kind of art that I'm doing to the degree to, that I'm doing it if I had not been here and had the influences around me. So I'm very, very thankful for my space and for this opportunity. I've seen art space actually transform a blighted part of Santa Cruz, the town that we live in, um, it was just it was just desolate over here. It was just a, a wasted area, and uh, they transformed it into a, a, a into an economic hub for the city. It was a be it's a beautiful place. When I got here, it was the brink of hardship, and now you look at the surrounding community six years later, and you can really see so much growth and potential. It's afforded me the the luxury of having to live in the same place I work. Having a space like this allows us to spend as much time as we need creatively to work and perfect the product that we're working on. It's a beautiful concept to think that people can be able to live sustainably and at the same time have a creative workspace, what's not to love? Having this location not only helped so much with our, you know, ability to live, you know, the, the cost of living was suddenly within our reach, um, but it also meant, oh, there are artists here. There is, um, you know, a real foundation for what I'm doing. The inspiration for, for writing comes from your life experiences from your interactions and something as simple as hearing somebody else's story or getting a different perspective on something you were thinking can change and deflect you know how how you approach your work in a lot of interesting ways Being able to have a reminder that other people are working every day just as hard as you are and kind of having that motivation because we're all kind of in it together. It's kind of becomes a great source of pushing you without you rather even really thinking about it sometimes to keep moving forward and doing more and challenging yourself. There's uh, an almost an unsaid uh, camaraderie between us, something that, that, that's just there where we genuinely feel appreciative that we're in the same spot, that we can be able to be ourselves artistically without feeling like nobody wants to hear this right now, nobody wants to be a part of this, you know, they just want to watch the game. We can talk about our art and don't have people look at you and kind of go, oh, what do you do really? It's really uh, interesting because we all have our own we're all, we all have our own form of art, but we're interested in all the others. Some of the musicians are painters, some of the painters work in the garden, you know, etc. So it's, um, it fosters a neat kind of interdisciplinary uh, community, I guess, really, of, mm -hmm. of all types of artists. It definitely changed um, how I approached dance because I had more access to other artists, musicians, and painters and I found myself right away collaborating and that's more what I wanted to do. It's coming home to and fro. You're able to see things and be exposed to things that most people would have to search for. It's a rare opportunity 
for an artist and for anyone who's seeking any kind of artistic pursuit to have a space that's designed specifically for them to be able to contemplate what it is they want to do and how they want to do it. It has been a profound pleasure to be a part of this community and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to live here, to work here, and to expand creatively here. So yay art space for turning this into home. In all seriousness, in all reality, this place affords me the sanity, the comfort, the solitude. The, uh, it just, it's, my, it's my own space and I can do uh, what I want when I want to do it. There's so many valuable perspectives and lenses on life that in any one week, your life can change. And I mean, that sounds pretty crazy, but it's true, you know? I mean, I, I believe artists are brilliant. I believe they see things in different ways, and I believe a great way to open yourself up to life is to uh, be around a bunch of artists, because they're crazy. <laughs>
And in Seattle, for example, there's uh, over a thousand artists on wait list for an art space, and they have three, two's running, and then they're just building a new one at Mount Baker. So, um, how much is it? That's you, know? uh, you mean the budget? Wise. Yeah. The budget wise, well, Everett, I know Everett was 17 million for the total project, and of that, the local community, uh, the city of Everett, they they uh, it's basically leased the land for you know a dollar a year type okay. thing so it's land and and then there's the home funds there's all kinds of uh, you know the home kind of like uh, affordable housing federal grants and stuff that cities can help us get mm -hmm. and but it's normally a project say of a 17 million dollar project it's normally 10 to 15 percent local but that that's including foundations local foundations local you know uh, grants but that's usually the contribution of a, and then the rest is done through art space projects and then on a, on a federal grant level. We mentioned individual contributions. Mm -hmm. I think right now we should uh, let everybody out there know about your website, which is olympiaartspace.org. Correct. And they can go there and they can learn more about the organization and they can find ways uh, that they can contribute, I'm Correct. sure, online. Right. You also have Facebook. So if and they Tom's can just, very active in Facebook. You can interact with Tom a lot. Talk to Tom on the Facebook. Manager. <laughs> yes. So yeah. you'd like uh, Olympia Art Space on Facebook. That's right. what we want people to do. Right, mm -hmm. and that's that will be a gateway to current information, not only from our group, but I try to post as much local information as I can too, just about the arts. So. I don't think people can have too many resources, particularly in Olympia, for how to get information on what's happening. Mm -hmm. Do we have a grasp of how long this will take? You know, five to seven years. Five to seven years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Typically, well, that's the way it's been. For for everything, for the for the fundraising, for right. the building, right. and then it'll be done. To complete. To be done. Right. Okay. Yeah. And the the nice thing about uh, like I say we haven't we haven't contracted with ArtSpace on ArtSpace projects on this yet but you know it's it's their their formula is, is such a, uh, a successful that they they built all through the recession and everything there uh, but it, it's what we're looking for whether it's private or whatever is sustainability for the artist we want we want this to be an affordable housing for artists for years to come. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so a lot of times in some areas uh, they'll come in as artist housing, then the area becomes very popular, the market rate goes up, and artists have to move out. Mm -hmm. Where the art space projects, that doesn't happen. This is a sustainable for the artists for long term, which is what we're doing all our work for. Right. You mentioned affordable. Do we have an idea of what that actually would be, like what the cost of a unit will be? Do you have that at, at mm -hmm. this point? Well, in the survey, which you can go into the real details by going to our, uh, go our, to the website. our website mm -hmm. and then click. We have two. We have the summary report and the technical report, and it shows exactly the different kind of breakdown of uh, like under, like the under uh, markability rates and, and everything like that. But it, it is probably from affordable. anywhere from four hundred to twelve hundred dollars, depending on the unit size. Four hundred for an efficiency, twelve hundred yep. for a three mm -hmm. bedroom. Right, right, right. And um, and it's it, it's the the process of um, getting a space will involve having a portfolio, making sure you're a legitimate artist of some form, so that you're not just someone who wants to live among artists, but uh -huh. you actually have to. And again, that, that uh, definition of artist could be a landscape architect, a poet. I mean, it's, uh -huh. it's a All very broad range. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's, um, and then once you're in, I, I think that uh, basically you're, uh, for perpetuity, the artists will have their space. And, and another good point there too is artists don't need to freak out if, if they have to work to also you know make money. It's you can you can be an artist and you can be working at a job and still be qualified for, okay. for an so art. So you space. can have a day job. You yes. can have a day job. <laughs> That's exactly right because right. you know it's called reality. And of the yeah. respondents, you know, less than uh, I think ten percent made their living from from yeah. actually doing art full so time. full time yeah mm -hmm. and that's that would be me <laughs> <laughs> nice so um we've got your, we've got a bunch of sponsors um 
you you're still trying to raise money at this mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. to get the design going. Right. Exactly. That's about a hundred hundred thousand. Okay. Exactly. Hundred fifty thousand is what to we'll get the now. next okay. phase going. Right. All right. And so. there are there are philanthropic organizations that we're going to you know uh, talk with, fill out grants. I mean, there's mm -hmm. such a, an amazing amount of work to pull these kinds of things together. Just the grant writing yeah. phase, just the contacts, just the public outreach and the events that we have to do. So any kind of monetary help we can get from the community will go directly into into the structure and not into salaries, for example. We're yes. all um, we're all volunteers. Okay, yeah. good. Well, let's mention the, the website again, which is olympiaartspace.org. Mm -hmm. And you also can, they can search for you on Facebook. Sure. Right. Find that. Right. Um, we do have to wrap this up. Any mm -hmm. final comments? Any last uh, requests from, from people watching? No, just, uh, you know, we'd appreciate, you know, go to our website and like us on Facebook. And yep. if uh, they'd like to volunteer or anything like that, we, you know, we have a link to our uh, our email on our website. So we like to hear from the community. And we did get over a third of the respondents said that they were willing to volunteer, which is extraordinary that you would get 230, 250 people that would willing to help out. So as soon as we can kind of get it together to make contact with those people, then that will be, be very useful. And okay. thank you today for your time. Thanks yeah, for coming. Good. You're welcome. So um, this is, I'm happy to say that this is gonna be our last standard definition production of Mission Nonprofit. We're going to be back in the late summer or early fall in high definition. So thanks for watching Mission Nonprofit. We'll see you in high def soon. If you know of a local nonprofit that's making a difference in our community, give us a call at 956 3100 extension 103 or send an email to rkam at tctv.net.